welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Today marks the start of my Halloween-ish creations and I am going to be trying the resin and cling film technique. Now, big shout out to Wanda's Blessed Creations. She is one of my amazing subscriber friends and honestly, she's so supportive and I went on over and checked out hers. She did an amazing job. So she's just amazing, guys. So if you want to go check out Wanda, honestly, getting a comment from Wanda is like getting a hug, a great big hug. So yeah, thank you so much for the inspiration on these, Wanda. I appreciate you so much. So I am going to be using some chameleon powders and I got these from Resin Detra Supplies. They are stunning. And yeah, this is the first time trying it and I'm excited. So let's get going. <laughs> The resin I'm using in this video is Glass Cast 3. Now, I do have Vista Cascade and Glass Cast 3. The 3 is designed for really thin, shallow pores, so I figured I would use this one. Again, I don't know if it was the right decision because I've not tried this before, but I start off by pouring a thin layer into the tray. Well, I mean, I pretty much use all of this resin anyway. Um, I would say the layer is around 2 to 3 mil thick. This tray is a centimetre deep, so I've got a lot of room to play with and then put on a back coat. Um, I'm just going to use my heat tool to blow that around, get rid of as many air bubbles as possible. Now, I do this for way longer than I'm showing you on the video, but yeah, I go around the whole thing taking my time and then I add more resin. I go around again and so on and so on until I've used all that resin up. At this point, I just slipped it off the tray because... I know this is going to be a messy one, at least I feel like this is going to be a messy one and I just didn't want to get my wooden board covered in resin, there was no point. Now I am using Cling Film, generic store brand Cling Film from, yeah, you've seen it on the box, but I don't know what best Cling Film is to use at this point. Um, should I use a branded one, a thicker one? I wasn't really sure. But this is what I had, so this is what I used. The trick to this part is making sure that, well, Doing your best to ensure that no air bubbles get underneath. I learned this from Wanda's video, so again, thank you for that helpful advice, Wanda. I found this part tricky. I'm not going to lie, this was tricky because you kind of feel like you can smooth it out with your finger, but obviously the resin is still liquid at this point, so it was really fiddly. And it was at this point that the cling film started to just naturally go down into the resin, and I allowed it. So you'll see here a close-up of the cling film just naturally going into the resin. Does that make sense? So I, I got rid of the hands, I didn't use the hands anymore, I let, I let the cling film do its thing and cling to the resin. And I just felt like this was the best, this was the best way for me at the time. Um, so now because I've got some excess left over around the edges, I know that I'm going to be pinching this in and pulling this in, so I want leftovers around the edges, but what I'm doing before I do that is tucking it in to the edges to make sure that I don't get giant air pockets around the edges of the tray. Now, I've definitely learned a lot from this video, so if anything, because this is my first attempt, I know already what I would do differently again, and hopefully I'll be able to share that with you as well. So here I am, I'm, I would definitely leave excess around the edge because as soon as you start to pinch it in and scrunch it in, you're gonna lose all that around the outside, and then you'll, lef you'll be left with areas that don't have any cling film and you don't really want that you want the whole tray to be with the design on it so at this point it was a case of just touching it and playing around I'll be honest I was nervous I didn't know do I do I scrunch it up real tight if I do that the cling film might get stuck in the ridges do I just poke it you know it really was trial and error um first time trying it and yeah I figured I would just have a poke move it a little bit but it wasn't, I don't know, I didn't get those dramatic drapey curtain, that, that, that dramatic curtain drape feel that I was going for. It, I didn't see it. I didn't see it evolving. And at this point, I thought maybe I should have used more resin. So that would be tip number one, pour a bit deeper than I poured. I feel like this pour was really shallow. You can kind of see here. You, it looks like draped fabric, but not what I was expecting. Now, disclaimer, I don't know what happened to the footage of me peeling the cling film off. This is 24 hours later, but this is what I did. I held my hand down in the center and I pulled away from the edges first. The trick to this is 
Don't allow that resin to lose the seal with the silicon mold, otherwise there will be a gap where the resin will pour down and under your piece. So that's what I was most nervous about. And tip number two, don't squish it so tight. I've got cling film trapped in places. So I could feel it. I was running my fingers over with the gloves on and you can hear it. Not only can you hear it, but you can feel it. So then I was able to get the tweezers out and just dig out any of the excess cling film because I'm pretty sure there's still some trapped in here, guys. I'm not going to lie, but it hasn't actually been detrimental to the piece. Does that make sense? So here I am. This is literally 10 minutes later. I'm starting to dust with the mica powder. And at this point, I wasn't sure if this is how it was meant to look. I felt like I was dusting it on, but then it was also coming off. And you can just see there, I'm, I'm kind of ready with my tweezers. If I come across any more cling film while I'm dusting, um, it was actually easier to find the cling film whilst dusting than it was to find the cling film just using my hands because the brush was so sensitive and it was I could hear it straight away and I was ready with my tweezers to grab it out but I'm loving the effect so far on this I think because it's chameleon this is the overall effect and because it's chameleon the colors on the other side are going to be amazing there are some areas on this that I absolutely love and I think actually you know what don't be so hard on yourself Claire for a first attempt this is not so crazy this is not so bad but there are some flat areas where I'm just like oh it's a bit flat it's not going to show much detail on the other side and I'm also nervous at this point because I'm thinking is this even going to show up you know I'm actually going to pour the back with black completely black resin so I'm using Resinate Black Opaque. This is my go-to black pigment. It does the job, it really is. Yep, can't recommend their pigments enough. But I'll be honest, I haven't tried hundreds of pigments. I, I'm, I'm kind of almost so set sometimes on Resinate and you know, a few others, but yeah, this is really great. Anyway, I mix it into the resin. I didn't measure how much resin I'm gonna need to fill up this tray, I just poured a load and hoped for the best and luckily I had enough for the tray and then I had a little bit left over that I just poured into a separate mold which is always handy it's another tip to always have molds on hand if you don't know exactly how much you need at this point I can't I can't really test it at this stage so yeah here I am just mixing the resin and I pour it in so I pour it in little bit at a time just to let it naturally work its way to those edges and all of those wrinkles and creases I was nervous about that I just needed to make sure that it got into every single little nook and cranny and then after I'd poured all of the black back um, you can see there I've got tons left but luckily I was able to use it on a leftover project but yeah after I poured the black I went in with my heat tool and I gave it a really good blow around I did it in between each stage so I probably poured that black maybe in four stages a little bit blew it around with the heat tool a little bit more blew it around with the heat tool just to avoid as many air bubbles as possible this was my theory <laughs> this was my theory I think in total I probably got two air bubbles that you'll see in the finished piece but I don't think they take away anything from it I think I think I can live with them so this is the next day this is demold this is more than 24 hours later I want to say around 28 29 hours later um, and this is the demold the backs looks really pretty but look at this now my first initial thoughts were, no, absolutely not. Did not do this right. It's not what I expected. However, I have grown to love this, A, being my first attempt. And the more I stared at it, the more I thought, again, I'm too hard on myself. I was expecting the results that I saw in Wanda's video. Um, but it does look drapey. It does look fabricy. It looks like crushed silk and in some areas I think it's absolutely stunning in other areas mm, yeah not my bag and I already know that I'm gonna try this technique again and yeah I cannot wait to do so and I'm gonna make changes I'm gonna pour a deeper resin and I'm also gonna pinch less you see where they're really tight they're like really tight squeezes of fabric this is where your cling film gets stuck and this is where I came unstuck but it hasn't been detrimental to the piece. 
I was really pleased with how the edge came out. I was expecting real mess, you know, I was expecting to have to sand it down. There's only a couple of little resin overspills that I can just chip off. And I decided, actually, this is not so bad. I actually am going to see it through to the final product and make it a tray and use it for my perfumes. So I decided to edge it. I've got some gold and silver pens. Cannot find my silver pen anywhere, so it's gonna be gold. It's gonna be rich gold and this bluey purple curtain swag. That's, that's how I can describe it. So I'm gonna use my Deco Color Premium Pen. And this is the fat tip one. Now I got this on Amazon. There was a period of time where we could not get this pen at all in the UK. And I got a message from someone saying, it's on Amazon, go, go, go. So I went onto Amazon, they had lots. I ordered two and I ordered one silver. Could you believe it? I cannot find the silver anywhere. It's here somewhere in the house, but yeah, until, until I actually tidy. I'm not gonna find that pen, but I'm already loving the gold with the purple. Now, it's such an easy pen to apply as well. I'm actually going to double check after this video to see if it's still available on Amazon. If this pen is still available on Amazon, I of course will link it down below. But unfortunately, majority of the time, we cannot get these deco colour pens in the UK. Um, and if you can, it's usually because someone has brought them over and they're selling them at a premium. And... I'm, I'm not about that life. <laughs> Once I'd done all of the edging, I decided to bring it up onto the surface and just do this thin detail around the edge and I just think it's made it. I honestly, this was one of them projects where I was like, this has not turned out as I expected, but I'm gonna share it with you anyway so that you can all learn from my mistakes. I wouldn't call them mistakes, I would call them lessons. Um, something I've never tried before, it's come out pretty pretty um but yeah i will definitely be doing things differently i've got another video coming out so stay tuned and i have to tell you i have to tell you because i can't keep it in the results are absolutely wow the results are what i was expecting this video to be <laughs> these are the results i was looking for and i got them on my second attempt um and hopefully you can learn from this and do very similar to what i've done but as I said, as I said, first attempt, it's definitely got that rich, crushed, silky vibe to it. It's definitely got that theatrical curtain thing going on. I, I haven't got the words, guys, but you know what I mean. Definitely Phantom of the Opera for me. This area here, a bit flat. I would have liked more detail, but this area here, my favorite. I wish the whole piece had it, but I'm definitely gonna use this as a perfume tray in my bedroom. And yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what colors you would go for and do stay tuned for the next video. I cannot express this enough. How much of a success I got with the second attempt and I cannot wait to show you guys. Here is the cling film. Well done, good job. <laughs> I will see you all in the next video. Bye.